Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Refuge from Narcissism and this refugee video is sponsored by contribution from Mike and here's his story. Hi Ollie, this is Mike. I wasn't expecting to write you another story so soon, but something just happened regarding one of my friends that has me livid. I told my wife and the first thing she said was email Ollie. I know you're looking for stories, so here we go. I became friends with a man named Larry in 2012. He's close to about 60 now. The best way I can sum him up is that he is a staunch and devoted Catholic and a budding musician and great conversationalist. How are you a budding musician at 60? I mean, I get it. I mean, sometimes it's never too late to get into something. But a budding musician at 60? I think it's a little past time. Maybe some delusion of grandeur. He helped me through one of the worst times in my life when my father died. I was over in the UK and he was in the USA, and yet he gave me more support than anyone else, albeit Facebook Messenger. Ten years into our friendship, and I still like him a lot, but a few things have come to light. Recently, he and his wife divorced, and when he told me about this, his explanation was, was that his wife was obsessed with money. A few years ago, I do recall she was trying to force him to sell the house and move into a rundown neighborhood. Thankfully, it fell through. He was in and out of jobs his whole life and recently worked as a school bus driver, then a counselor. He had two kids who both live with him, both of whom appear to have Asperger's. A son who was planning to move to Oregon to start a new life. I know that kid well, and while he has his challenges, he's a good kid, and the best thing he can do is get out of here and be his own man. He's been furious with Larry for being too involved in his life in the past. The second kid is the one I'm more concerned with, a young girl around 23 named Anna, who never leaves her room and claims to have agoraphobia. <clears throat> agoraphobia is like when you're afraid to go outside. Um, basically, you know, you're afraid of people, afraid of social situations. Um, that's agoraphobia for those who don't know. In 2017, Larry bought her a rescue puppy. Oh, please don't let it be a freaking pit bull, please. That puppy lived most of its life in her room and was under socialized. The dog named Taffy also did not like men and would constantly growl at Larry and his son. Thankfully, it never bit anyone. I would often visit for a movie night and it would growl and then scuttle off. I never sensed it was a bad dog at all, just very fearful, neurotic, and under socialized. After the recent divorce, Larry did one of the dumbest things I ever heard. He went out and blew $1,000 on some kind of Akita puppy as a present for Anna. Akitas are fucking nasty. As far as I'm thinking, yeah, no, Akitas are nasty. <clears throat> this is always my fear with people who try to project power through dangerous dogs. This seemed completely bizarre, given that she already had her own dog. He brought it home, and Taffy immediately started trying to attack it. He messaged me and said he had no choice but to return Taffy to the Humane Society. I was completely blown away by this comment. Wouldn't it be easier to return the puppy? The dog who has spent... This dog who has spent its whole life, five years, in his home and was suddenly going to be tossed out like trash... After I pointed out how heartless this was, he agreed to get a trainer and not throw out the dog. Over the course of a few months, the dog seemed to be getting on with only a few minor incidents over food. Something bad is going to happen with that freaking Akita. Something bad's going to happen. I thought things were going to work out until suddenly I got a late night call from one of Larry's family. They said they had trouble sleeping and they had found out he had returned Taffy to the Humane Society. They were scared to confront him as they had been warned about by his brother that it wasn't worth being cut off from the family over. Clearly, there was some kind of incidence, and knowing the personality of Akita's and how fast the pup was growing, it would not surprise me if she finally fought back and the incident scared him so much that Larry decided Taffy had to go. Yeah, if the Akita didn't kill Taffy. That's if the Akita didn't already kill Taffy, which is always which is always a possibility. 
I have a friend who is familiar with the breed, and she says never have two females in the same household. His daughter was then fired from her job and is now milking a diagnosis of borderline personality. She certainly seems to play her dad like a fiddle. Cluster Bs love their enablers. I don't know her very well, as she pretty much lives in her room, but the more this goes on, the more I am starting to think his ex-wife might have a good reason to want the divorce. Maybe he pulled this kind of behavior regularly. The relative told me he has been complaining about finances lately, which is ironic given the cost of the puppy. He seems to be very a very weak man when it comes to disciplining his kids. Well, they're not kids anymore. Now they're adults. Kind of hard to discipline an adult, no? His son even had a psychotic breakdown about four years ago. Something seems very wrong in that family. I could go on, but I figured this would be enough for you to read the situation and let me know what you think is going on. All I will say in closing is I'm so disappointed in my friend. Thanks again and take care, Ollie. Mike. Well, let me tell you. I'll tell you this. With the life changes, the divorce I would say Larry's probably feeling like his life is out of control, but he probably always feels that way. And when there's some kind of incident like that, look, people try to project power and control through dangerous dogs sometimes. Okay? This is this is very common in the pit bull community. Okay, that's why I'm anti-pitbull. I don't like them. Please, you pitbull lovers, save it. It's not the breed. It's the it's the owner. No, it, it's the breed and the owner. It's the breed, and I understand you could have one. I've had my pitbull for X amount of years, and it's never done, and it's so lovely. And, you know, nine times out of ten when I dive in deeper into one of those stories, and I'm like, so you're saying this dog has never had an incident? with anything you get to oh well there was that one time but that was the chihuahua's fault that was the child there was a startle it's always an excuse it comes about a lecture another lecture about dogs and how i can control them and you can't now it sounds like in in in, in larry's case this is something that's just been going on um I don't know if, if if the story is a friend, if the friend had trouble sleeping and they found out he returned Taffy to the Humane Society, like what, how does that work? They didn't realize the dog was gone until they got up and what, went looking for the dog? Sounds to me like there was some kind of incident because Akitas don't, Akitas don't mess around, man. They're another one of those aggressive dog breeds that kill. They kill other dogs, they kill other animals, and they and they hurt and maim children, and they kill people. They just do. And for somebody who you say still is living under the impression that they're going to be some kind of budding musician at almost 60 years old, this fits into the profile of one of these people who try to project power through dangerous animals. It's what they do. He dropped a grand on this dog. I don't know what the other dog breed is. It doesn't sound like. So as soon as I heard, and that's why as soon as I heard budding musician coupled with dog, the first thought I'm getting like thinking is this is a pit bull type of situation. Well, pit bull, Akita, same thing. It's the same thing. It's these people who feel like, you know, they haven't had, their life isn't fulfilled, it's not their fault, okay, they want to take it out on other people, they want to project themselves as something as pen powerful, so they do it through dangerous animals, through dangerous dogs. And it sounds like he isn't he isn't the greatest father to begin with anyway, that his daughter's locked in her room at 23, um... Diag- milking a diagnosis of borderline personality. I don't see, and that's that's the other thing. I mean, that's the other red flag. Like you, you know how I feel about borderlines. You know how dangerous I think they are. Okay, milking a diagnosis means that's they're seeking pity for this condition. And I keep telling you, there is no pity to be given to a borderline. There's just not because they can decide they could change their behavior any time they choose anytime they choose they can change their behavior don't let anybody tell you differently and i know that pisses people off but too bad it's calculating it's 
it's decisive it's it's to get the, whatever they want to get their goal okay there's nothing more destructive than borderline and borderlines and dangerous dogs go hand in hand <clears throat> Larry sounds like he's a borderline. He might be a borderline himself from what you describe of him. And whenever a borderline, so when borderlines get out of control and they feel like they're losing control, one of the ways they try to control and get power and feel powerful is thinking that they can control these dangerous dogs that other people are terrified of. And it's only a matter of time before something really, really, really bad happens. Okay, I'm not even convinced he gave the dog away. If I had to put money on it, I'd say that Akita probably killed that other dog, depending on what it is. And if he did give the dog away, it is pretty fucked up. It is pretty fucked up that he would give a dog away that's been living with him for five years for the Akita. Because he can't get anything out of the out of the other dog that he's had for five years. I guess nobody's afraid of it. Nobody's afraid of it. Plenty of people are afraid of Akitas and pit bulls and those type of dangerous dogs. And I think that's what your friend Larry is looking for. Because like you said, at 60 years old, he's still trying to be a budding musician. Delusions of grandeur. So this is where he'll gain gain his power from. From a dangerous dog. Akitas are dangerous. Pipples are dangerous. And it's always the same type of personality type that, you know, you could see every time. They barely have two nickels to rub together, but they'll drop a thousand dollars on an Akita. Or they'll be breeding pit bulls. It's one of those, it's one of those, one of those tools of the borderline narcissist is dangerous dogs. So <clears throat> I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but that's my take on it. So I hope that helps. Uh, thank you so much for another contribution and story, Mike. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with either the Zelle or PayPal links and the and the and my email in the description box below. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Refuge from Narcissism. Take care, everyone.